The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. How many have ever seen a picture of St. Dennis? Anybody ever seen a picture of St. Dennis? Raise your hand if you've seen a picture. Oh, then you must be informed. When Jennifer and I went to Paris, France, we ministered in a church there, and we noticed that the patron saint of France was St. Dennis. So I went, wow, that got my interest right away. I wanted to know about this guy. And he was, uh, you don't hear much about this, but basically he was martyred and had what they call a cephalophoric miracle. Have you ever heard that term before even? He was beheaded and kept on preaching. And he was holding his head. And and the architecture around uh, Notre Dame has a picture of the saints, and St. Dennis is holding his own head right here. Don't you love it? This is the mind of Christ anyway, not here. So he was holding his head down here. I was thinking, and Jennifer said, that sounds just like you. Keep on preaching, get your head cut off, and you're still talking. All right. (laughs) But, hey, somebody's got to do it, right? Uh, How many have ever heard of that before? Cephalophoric miracles. Okay, good. Then you learned something today. All right. And St. Dennis, uh, he's like the Energizer Bunny, you know, just keeps on ticking. He just kept on (laughs) preaching away. I don't know how long the message was, but still, that's quite an accomplishment, don't you think? Wow. Walk two miles. Well, Jennifer's going to give me the historical accuracy. I just, I exaggerate and embellish everything, and Jennifer gets down to the facts and goes, that's not the way it was. It was, okay. That's why we need each other desperately. I want to tell you something as far as uh, basically picking up a dis- uh, discerning of spirits, as far as a level of anointing. There's an anointing in here for physical healing, and we're going to cover some things on authority, but I want you to realize that uh, um, I say, well, we don't do this in our church. Well, you're not in your church <laughs> if you're a visitor, so you're going to do it with us, all right? But in reality, uh, I am totally and thoroughly convinced that God's been doing a wonderful work with Jennifer and I on, on, in the realm of physical healing. And there's some things I'd like to teach on someday, and we'll cover it. But in the meantime, I believe that we've seen the rise of the evangelist in the 50s. In the 60s, we saw the pastors and the teachers really being equipped and thrust forth in the body of Christ. The 70s had teachers. The 80s had the prophets. And think about it, you know what, there's, there's still churches that are still investigating the prophetic, like, uh, are we open to that or not, or, uh, you know. The funny thing is, is science is usually, what, 20 years ahead of the world. In other words, when they discover something before it's common knowledge, it's usually 20 years before all society believes it. So you're really believing a lot of old stuff. Stuff that you learned in school is really old. Okay, but what's worse is the church has a tendency to be three decades behind. If the world's two decades behind, the church catches up three decades. But I also believe that God sends forerunners into the body of Christ to bring those things that are relegated for the future and bring them into present tense experience. Did you hear what I said? Present tense experience, not head stuff, experience, experiential knowledge. And I believe that uh, God called us for such a time as this to raise up the priesthood of the believer. I believe the day that is approaching uh, is more the priesthood of the believer than apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers. If pros- apostles, prophets, pastors, and teachers proficiently did their job, they would be equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry, and we wouldn't see a bunch of babies. We would start seeing uh, whiners and, you know, ever meet Joe and Helen Weiner? Joe, I don't like that. It hurts. Helen, it's okay. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do nothing. That's kind of the attitude of the church, Joe and Helen Weiner. Well, Joe and Helen Weiner usually last here about three hours, and then they're gone. Because I believe in raising chiefs. 
my spiritual mentors, I used to meet with a half a dozen pastors who were always older than me when I was a young pastor. They were older and much wiser and learned a great deal from them, met weekly for many, many years. And they always said, Dennis, you've got one characteristic here they used to tease me about. Uh, that when I started my first church, about 250 people in it, but I had mostly leaders. And they said, you've got all chiefs, where's your Indians? I said, if my chiefs are proper chiefs, they're servant leaders. Amen. And they're both. But I'm not, I don't baby, give baby food. We are far from seeker friendly. Sometimes we're not even friendly, <laughs> yet alone seeker friendly. I want the body of Christ to grow up into the priesthood of believer and stand on their own two, three through death, burial, and resurrection. Actually, we've even, we've even, uh, they've even coined the term that we, in the middle, get, teaching people how to grow up and get the garbage out of their life, they call it inner healing. Inner healing is a misnomer. We don't heal the old man. We bring him to death, burial, and resurrection, that which passes through death yet lives. And I believe in transformation and standing on your own two feet. We baby no one. If you want baby, they go somewhere else. We don't baby anybody. We're going to teach you how to rely on the Jesus in you to stand on your own two feet. And any parent would want that for their children, so I don't know why any pastor would not want that for his congregation. I don't want a bunch of sickly dependent people on me. So having said all of that, I'll have you know for a, a congregation, uh, this is a small congregation of roughly 50 people, but I'll tell you what, most of them can stand on their own. And out of the 50 people, uh, we have at least, at least 10 pastors out of 50. So I don't apologize even to my mentors and my spiritual father used to tease me on it, but they said, you just keep doing what you're doing because what you're doing is working. But they said, Dennis, you have all chiefs and no Indians. And I said, my chiefs are Indians. They can do both. They're like David's men. They can shoot the bow with the left hand or the right hand. They're ambidextrous in the spirit and they are competent to stand on their own two feet. So you know what? If you want it easy, there's plenty of churches you can go to that are easy. Over here, it's difficult because we really put a demand on you to bring to death and crucify that flesh of yours and stand on your own two feet in the Lordship of Jesus. And almost everything that we teach as far as the practical element is how to stand on your own two feet and how to bring death, burial, and resurrection to those areas in your life that need it. And trust me, none of you have arrived. And for many, many years... There's people in Charisma Magazine, this is not bragging, this is just giving you a point. There are people in Charisma Magazine that you read about that we ministered to privately on a, on a one-to-one that God sent us some highly gifted people, but highly gifted people with woundings. And it was sabotaging their gifts and callings. And, uh, and unless they tell uh, how we minister to them, I'm not mentioning names, that's just not proper, but on, in the reality is it's so thrilling for me to see them moving forward and upward in the things of God, and they all hit their snags, I don't care who they are. Oh, there's some that'll never open up to anybody, I understand that, that they're frightened. But on the other hand, we saw the beauty transformation of people in hard places that literally overcame it, and they are now in powerfully fulfilling ministry. And so I'm grateful for that. To stand on your own two feet is a priesthood of the believer. And if anyone doesn't want to do that, there's part of you that doesn't want to grow up. We don't have no Peter Pan spirits here. Peter Pan spirits. <laughs> I don't grow up. I don't want to grow up. Did you, how many know Peter Pan? Okay. I have to relate wherever I can relate, okay? Um, but this morning, I'm saying all this because uh, we have such a person that was like that, a servant leader uh, who will be chief. And uh, I'm going to ask Rebecca to come up here and face me. Jennifer, would you come up here with me, please? Uh, I just want you to stand right here and look me eyeball to eyeball. If you can handle that, then I know you're a leader. All right? <laughs> but uh, Rebecca, over three years, has studied everything that we've taught. I've caught her listening to this stuff over and over again. And I really feel that she has competently mastered it and that we want to ordain her under full stature of ministries as a competent pastor teacher to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And she won't let anybody wiggle out and complain, cry. No Joe and Helen whiners. You know Joe and Helen whiners? Joe and Helen. Okay. We don't do them either. Joe and Helen whiners, you bring it to death on the cross and grow up. Face your pain momentarily and take that which 
is troubling you and let it pass through death yet live in a new way under a transfiguration, under a spiritual transformation of new life. And so Rebecca has been here three years, she told me, to the week, basically three years to the week. And I find it was very timely that we chose today. But these fivefold ministries are gifts that are given by Christ himself to the church. He gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints, not to be headliners, not to be Joe Heavy speaker. But if they are doing their job, they're going to equip the saints to stand on their own two feet and not baby them. We will baby no one here, and neither will Rebecca. Rebecca never babied anybody before she got <laughs> ordained. She's not, she's not likely to baby anybody after, all right? But the job is to equip, equip the saints because we're looking that there is a time of awakening that has already begun and is at hand. And I believe that uh, many people that call themselves Christians will just kind of back by the wayside when things get tough. And I'm believing that we're not raising such in this place. In this place, it's hard to be a member here. It's difficult to be a member here because we won't play games. I've spotted 40 years of ministry. I've spotted every trick, manipulation, and uh, uh, self-promoting person in the world. We cut the cords from that. In this place, we have two models that we've said from the beginning, right? Glenn's been with us from the beginning, right? We die to our agendas. That's your personal selfish ambitions that do get exposed. And we deal with our issues. That's a nice name for saying sinful, bad, fleshly behavior, all right? And I've watched the transformation. I'm not interested in putting on a new painting on outward exterior. I'm looking for internal transformation. And Rebecca's been just one just like that to where I've seen the internal transformation. And you know what's the best testimony? Is when other people say, I've seen the change. Mm -hmm. Then you know only God does that. Man can't do that. Huh? Behavior modification can't do that. Right, Jennifer? I can change some behavior, but it can't change the inside. You can change behavior, but it doesn't necessarily change the inside. So basically what we're believing is that we're equipping and that we're going to release and, and replicate in, in ordaining Rebecca that she's basically going to take that unity of the spirit and equip others to stand on their own two feet in the full stature approach. The body of Christ needs to be brought to an adequate witness of love that we shall know them by their love one toward another. That's what I'm interested in. I'm not interested in the crowd. I've never had an interest in a crowd. I've always had a body that felt like an organism that loved one another. And it's not how they love me. I'm not interested in how you love me. I'm interested in how you love one another. Because if you can't do that, I see right through that. Because anybody can patronize the leaders, right? That's called the pride of sophistication. Warm up to a leader to make yourself look good even though you don't deal with your character issues. But when a person deals with their character issues and they start loving what I love. How about you parents? When somebody starts loving your kids, that's a little bit different than them loving you, right? isn't it? It means more, doesn't it? I feel the same way as a pastor of this church. I say, I watch how my leaders love the congregation, not me. All right? That's more important. So, besides, I'm hard to love anyway. And I purposely like that. But basically, we're believing that this covering, that I believe with all my heart that Rebecca Lebovich has the same DNA as we do in the spirit, and that we recognize that God connected us, that divine appointments have become uh, divine purpose, that we're going to be knit together. We acknowledge your call to the great commandment as well as the great commission. You stand before us this day, and I want you to repeat after me the vows of your ordination. Will you continue to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord? Will you work toward establishing the forgiveness message and the ministry of reconciliation? Will you equip the saints for the work of the ministry for building up the body of Christ? Will you endeavor to live, teach, and preach the maturing of the saints? No baby food. No enabling. We're equipping. There are plenty of places that will enable let them enable. Let them do what they feel called to do. But we baby no one. We equip them to stand on their own two feet so that others will see the Jesus in them and say, truly, these people have been with Jesus. 
So will you endeavor to live, teach, and preach the maturing of the saints of full stature? I said that already, but I'm saying it again. Yeah. All right. Then, Father, right now, could I have all of the pastors come up here right now? I want you to turn and face the congregation. And we're going to lay on hands for that anointing. That, which, this is a, a God thing, not a man thing. That that which has already been placed within her, we're simply acknowledging the gift of teacher on the inside. And that she's going to go forward to teach our modules, to teach our training, and to teach people to raise up in a full stature approach. And she's done it from children to adults. She has the capacity to take and break down into the essential ingredients. And we do ordain and establish her in the ministry of full stature ministries to go forth in the teaching and and replicating and duplicating all that God has put within her and causing it to go forward. Let her gifts and her callings uh, be coming together in convergence. May there be a convergence of her gift mix that even now are being released. I released anointing and apartment and impartation of every good and everything that God has ever used in me. I release that anointing right now. And, and as she opens her heart to receive, receive all of the anointings from Jennifer and I, from Cliff and Stina, from uh, Jason and Gwen and from Pastor Vicki. And uh, I'm sure Molly, Pastor Molly's watching from Cape Cod right now and she's releasing her blessing to you as well. And so, Father, we just thank you that you began a good work, are going to continue that good work. And for those that know, Rebecca, you haven't seen anything yet. For the days ahead are going to be filled, that God's going to restore the years the locust has eaten. God's going to take every mistake and every, every uh, shipwreck uh, in, in your past, and God's going to turn it into a beautiful garden. And he's going to cause it to be a double portion of anointing to flow forward on all of those areas that were before times tested and weakened and even failed, God says, I'm going to bring beauty for ashes. I'm going to take out of the, out of the, out of the compost pile of the mistakes and errors. I'm going to cause a beautiful garden to grow, and I'm going to multiply it. And it's wherever that river flows, it's going to produce life and life abundance because it's through the, it's through the finished work of the cross, through death, burial, and resurrection. We just ordain and establish that what God has begun in Rebecca right now is going to pass through death yet live in resurrection life. Death, burial, and resurrection of Christ <laughs> Jesus is rising up on the inside of her with a fresh new anointing and a new stability to equip people to stand on their own two feet and move in the fullness of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Jennifer, you have a word? Rebecca, I... It's on. Rebecca, I know your teaching ability. You've demonstrated that. But I'm seeing the Lord say that he's going to do something that's mightier and more powerful than you've understood yet. I'm seeing, I'm seeing you overseeing a whole area of ministry. I see you being instrumental in team embassy in the school. And I'm seeing you be in charge of multitudes of missionaries and young people who are going to come. And I see that you being the one that... that assigns them to the people you know will help them. I see you coordinating. I see you, I see you organizing. I see you working individually. I see you moving into all different aspects of the ministry and teaching. I see you working with people one-on-one. -on -one. I see you praying with people. I see you take phone calls from overseas to help people out. I'm seeing you be instrumental and a pillar in this place. And the Lord says, I'm going to take your gift and I'm going to multiply it. The Lord says there's going to be a fresh anointing that's going to come upon you. And the Lord says it's going to amaze even you. But the Lord says the words out of your mouth, they're going to carry fire on them and they're going to burn right into people's hearts. And the Lord says that when you're teaching, the Lord says, I'm going to be doing sovereign works in people's hearts based on the words that speak that come out of your mouth. And the Lord says a day is coming. Coming, a day is coming when I'm going to raise you up into a significant place that's higher than you've ever dreamed. But the Lord says, get ready, get ready, get ready. Keep pursuing me, keep pursuing me, keep serving, keep serving, keep serving. The Lord says, because I am going to raise you up, says the Spirit of God. Cliff and Stina. Rebecca, this morning when I was pondering on your ordination today, I heard the Lord say, faithful, faithful, 
faithful, oh, faithful woman of God, that God has seen you in the night, God has seen you in the day, God has seen you in the morning, and he said, you have ravished my heart. You have ravished my heart. In fact, the Lord says that in the days ahead, there's going to be so much fruit coming out of you that's going to even amaze you. That the, that the fruit is going to be the fruit of the Spirit. And the Lord says, I'm going to make a way where there's been no way in the past in many issues of your life. That God is going to be your provision, not only spiritually, but financially. And that the Lord says, get ready, the best is ahead. You guys go next, though. And as we look back and we see the faithfulness of God, we just can anticipate, and I feel that you can anticipate and look forward that the faithfulness is just going to increase. And I'm kind of dating myself, but I got a song from back in the 70s, You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. <laughs> so the best, the best is yet to come. Okay. I heard that you were faithful with a little as well. And in every little step that you took and were faithful in it, it has built up a deposit of greater anointing, authority, and power that you are to be released to walk in now. And we are so excited to see you walk in it and be a part of us with that anointing. Very, I'm so thankful for you. setting myself aside for a minute. <laughs> uh, I really felt like um, what, I was, what I was seeing was uh, you spinning, kind of like in a, um, a traditional like Jewish dance um, or a wedding dance. And I just kept on seeing you spinning, spinning, spinning. And I heard the Lord tell me that you are going to be able to put on paper what he shows you, that he's going to start showing you a lot. And you're going to be able to express it, whether it's in writing or whether it's in pain or whatever. I saw, I saw your hands moving, so I know it had to do with your hands. Um, and that he's going to be opening the door and opening the, and, 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 and taking that, that veil off of your eyes so that you'll be able to see. And you're going to be able to express that, what you've seen. So... Sister. Thank you so much. And we've all seen that faithfulness that, that God has had to you and that you have been to the ministry. There's dependability, faithfulness, and loyalty, and that's something that has spoke loudly to me personally is your loyalty to the ministry and to Dennis and Jennifer. I'm glad to have you as a friend. And um, I'm looking forward to see how God's going to um, bring to pass all the things that he has um, spoken to you today. Because it's going to be all in him. And, and I'm so grateful for that and what he is doing in our midst and in you. And um, the thing that, the, that I felt like the Lord wanted me to say to you today was that he is restoring in a way that you never thought possible. Restoration. Okay. You guys may be seated. You can stay here. You're not done yet. Rebecca, may this certificate be a continual reminder that on this day and in this place, you are set apart for the high and holy office of Christian ministry as a Christian minister of the gospel under full stature ministries.
and I have a folder for you that has um, your cards that identify you as an ordained minister and a welcome letter and if and some also some accountability forms that if you go anywhere and teach you mail one of those in that's something that we do with all of our ordained pastors is if they go and teach anywhere else I want a report from the people that they went and taught a critique that keeps their feet to the fire of not blowing in blowing up and blowing out and that kind of accountability is missing in the body of Christ to a large degree so uh, and then we as a team get together and we talk about any of the comments pro or con they're usually pro with our people but we still we talk about it because even strengths need encouraged do they not and She's Rebecca like, one more thing I was seeing the writing too that was mentioned and that God's going to unleash an even greater anointing for writing 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 and breaking things down and making them granular and and breaking things down into small steps so people can be trained, but also creative writing, yeah. creative writing for many different age groups. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been ordained several different times based on my church ministry experience, but uh, many years ago when Jennifer and I got married, uh, Bishop Hammond came out of retirement, retirement in the, he's not retired, retirement in the sense he didn't ordain, and the regional manager in, uh, in Greer, South Carolina says, oh no, you gotta, you gotta take, make an exception and ordain these two. And he ordained Jennifer and I, and when he got to Jennifer, he basically said, he said, it's gonna be harder for you not to prophesy than to prophesy. And to this day, I hand her the microphone, I have to drop down my spear and go, oh well, let it go, this could take up the rest of the service because she's, she's loose now. So I believe that much of the anointings that we have, that uh, actually all of us corporately, um, I believe that there's an impartation for her. And I believe that there are many quality people in the body of Christ that are, instead of being equipped by the leaders, they're being limited by the leaders. And uh, our job was to equip the saints for them to do the work of the ministry, not be the Joe Heavy cork in the bottle we don't need bishops and popes, well, if they're good ones, <laughs> but we need basically equippers. We need coaches yes. that equip the team to do the work of the ministry. And, and I believe that she's going to replicate that anointing that's in us, and she's going to replicate it quite well. Thank you, Rebecca, thank for being you. part of us. And also thank you because she's being ordained based on proven ministry, that doesn't mean just learning the material, but I saw the character qualities that went with. We will not ordain a lazy person. So that's a, hey, no, no lazy people that are just working an angle. And she's one hard worker, but at the same time, if you're walking in the anointing, you should never get wore out. If you're getting wore out, you're just in religious flesh. And we've seen the beauty of how much God can accomplish with less effort and even though you're being extremely dedicated to the call of God. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit Forgive123.com.